Hi, this is Dr. Martina, your sexuality expert. I was asked this fabulous question the other day, which gave me an idea about this video, and that is the question was, how does our sexual, how does our sexual arousal actually function? I thought it was a brilliant question, it hardly ever gets asked, and I think it's important to know how that all works in our system, since it is the most important ingredient in our sexual experience. So I decided to give you a little nuts and bolts um, education on sexual, genital arousal, sexual arousal, however you want to call it. Um, I always say that our body belongs to our sexuality. No, that's not what I say. <laughs> I always say that sexuality, <laughs> whoa, well that actually could work too. I always say that sexuality actually belongs to our body and therefore it's our body that determines sexual arousal, genital arousal. And it does that with two reflexes, and we're all born with these reflexes. The first reflex is the one that initiates sexual arousal. I call it a switch, so I can check with myself, is my switch on or is it off? Um, but, it's like, but like any kind of a other switch, like any other one, light switch, it cannot be turned on at will. And or without any kind of a stimulation. So, um, but once it is turned on, what happens is there is a involuntary vasocongestion of the genital that happens. That's the reaction to that kind of initial turning on of that switch. And that happens in male bodies, it happens in female bodies. What uh, vasocongestion means is it's blood flow towards the genitals. So um, the body gets woken up, the body gets aroused, the body gets excited, um, the body uh, is stirred for further action, and um, the show is on. The body is aroused. That is the first reflex. The second reflex is the one that releases the sexual tension, which happens at the, at the threshold of the point of no return. And um, it does, uh, there also is a involuntary reaction to that, and that is muscular spasms and ejaculation. This happens also in both bodies, male bodies as much as female bodies. I understand not all females are do ejaculate, but there's a lot of us who do, and therefore those are the two responses that happen in both bodies. Um, the, the idea of these two reflexes, so what these two reflexes, what they represent for me is, it's like, I look at them as like the bookends of our sexual experience and within within that experience the goal is to after the initial switch is turned on the goal is to increase the arousal to go up to let's say you come in in the first level to go up to to level 10 so you can have that tension release that sexual tension release and that would be the goal to be able to increase that arousal and yet again your body helps you out with that because the body actually offers six arousal sources that you can tap into it and with you, the, a conscious use of them you can increase your arousal. Um, I have uh, following this um, these couple words right here that I have, that I have two slides that I made. Um, one is about showing the, the graph of the two reflexes and it also tells you again what the involuntary reactions are and it also tells you what the six arousal sources are. I'm working on learning how to narrate this uh, so please Bear with me, you know, I, I am an expert in human sexuality, but I'm not an expert in, in computer um, programs, so, but I will learn that, so I'll just give you a chance now to take a look at those two slides, and then we will continue. So let's talk about these six arousal sources. 
First, we'll talk about the senses, the five, the five senses. Um, touch. Touch, I want to start with that because it's the biggest source that we have. Our bodies are absolutely amazing. They spoil us with the sensation they give us. It gives us um, when we're being touched. We have superficial sensory receptors that respond to light touch. We have deeper sensory receptors that, that responds to more uh, muscular touch. Whatever touch that you like, I'm pretty sure you're using this source as a, for you to increase your arousal. It is something I depend on, it's something I need, it's something I want, so um, it is an amazing source. Sight. Sight is also a powerful source. Um, this is something I had to learn about it because I was not brought up to, to look at the genitals when I'm having sex. Um, so now I do that. I actually, when I'm stuck somewhere at an arousal source, at an arousal level that I can't seem to increase, I make sure I open my eyes and I look at my partner's and my lover's um, body, I look at my own body, I, um, I feast with my eyes. And um, that is a source that I use a lot and I like a lot. And um, and the sight, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be um, images or people. Um, it can also be surroundings. I remember I um, years ago I went to a bar in San Francisco. It's not there any longer, but I walked into the bathroom and I was just taken by it's the way it looks. I, wa I remember walking in and all I could think about, oh my God, this is such a sexy bathroom. I want to have sex in here. Now I took a picture, not I took a, a mental picture of that, and I brought it home with me, and I've been using it as a, as an arousal source through my masturbation. I imagine having sex in there. I even talked to my lover about it. So it's it's um, sight is an amazing an amazing source. Um, Sound. Sound is right up there too. It's also a source that I use. It's one of the senses I'm really aware of when I'm being sexual um, because it, it is also something that has, that has not been allowed. I mean, now when I hear my partner moan, that, is, that increases my arousal. When I hear myself moan, it increases my arousal. Sometimes I fake it until I make it, meaning if I feel like I need some help with my own arousal because it is my responsibility to increase that arousal, I, I moan and I hear myself moan and then sure enough my arousal increases and, um, and then the moaning becomes authentic. Taste. Taste is something that I use less. Taste is a, a source that a lot of people use. Um, they like the way genitals taste when they have a personal smell to it, have a personal scent to it. So um, it is totally up to you what you like. If this is a source that you like, that would be wonderful. If you have a partner that uses that source, but you know, you kind of have an idea he likes that, but you may want to talk to him about it so he doesn't have to be shamed about it or hide it, but then you can play along with it. So it, uh, it's a sense that uh, is one of the senses that we use um, to increase our arousal. So it's there, it's available. And the same thing with smell. Um, I like the smell of sex in the air. That definitely does it for me and increased arousal. But the smell of a sweaty body um, sometimes doesn't do it for me. It actually does the opposite. So it is yet again, it's personal. Um, it is one of the senses. Use it if you'd like. Maybe you already are. Become aware of it. Share it with your partner and talk about it. So those are the five senses. Um, now we have the big one, uh, fantasy. It's a huge source. And it's becoming bigger and bigger, unfortunately, because... Um, our society supports being in our brain more than in our, you know, physicality of our body. So it is, um, it is a, it's a source that I use. Um, I use it a lot when I masturbate. I sometimes use it when I'm with a partner um, because I'm lazy. I'm a lazy lover at that time. Um, the partner is not doing 
what I need in order to increase my arousal, so I fantasize about something else or somebody else. Um, this is something that I, uh, the fantasy is there. Um, it is a source that we all use. Um, I would just, um, I'm just a little more careful how much time I spend up there in the head because I really don't want to be disconnected from my own system, from my own body and definitely not from my partner for too long. So um, um, use it with caution or just not as often, just like a vibrator. Vibrators are great, but if you only use vibrators, then, um, then the causes other problems because it cannot be matched by your partner. So um, those are the six arousal sources. Um, one of the exciting things about um, these are is that if you take one of the sources away, away deliberately, like you take the sight away by either using a blindfold or making the room extremely dark, the other sources increase. So you're smell increases, your um, your hearing increases, the touch increases, the feeling that you get when you're being touched. So that's something you can play with too, you know, then, you know, restrict one of the sources and increase the others. Whatever it is that you do, I just highly recommend for you to, that you diversify. Um, if you're stuck with only, or if you're used to only using one source, like sight, and then you have a partner that has that only can have sex in the dark for whatever reasons body image issues or upbringing sexual morals whatever it is then there's a problem um, so diversify make sure that you don't get stuck in one of the sources that you uh, use them all that would be ideal just to use them all and you will have enough um, sources available for you for you to increase your arousal. So um, this is a, this was a short nuts and bolts about sexual arousal, how it functions in your body. Now this obviously um, is a huge topic, and I'm going to continue this next week because next week I'm going to talk about the three laws of the body which are tools that I, I can teach you about and these tools you will be able to use to manage your arousal to make it go up and make it go down whenever you want to to hold off on it when you want to and to increase it fast when you want to so i hope to see you next week thank you so much and you have a great day bye bye